a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officials had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them, We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, uh, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, through, though you had killed him by hanging him on the tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are all witnesses to these things as the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will ever be in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the person who takes refuge in him. Alleluia. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. Alleluia. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and to those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just person, but out of them all the Lord delivers them. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus continued his discussion with Nicodemus. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does not accept the testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Holy Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever destroys or disbelieves or disobeys the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains upon him. The word of the Lord. So the apostles are being dragged before the Sanhedrin. This is after Pentecost, because at that point, when the Holy Spirit filled them, they went out and started preaching to the people that Jesus, that you crucified, is now alive. We saw him, and many people have seen him, and many of us are eyewitnesses to that. So with that, the Sanhedrin, which is the religious authorities of the, of the Jews, dragged them into the court, the church court, you might say, the temple court. And they're telling them, shut up, don't talk about this guy, and stop using his name, and stop saying uh, that we were, we were the cause of his death, and we hung him on a tree, all the stuff that he says. And they say, sorry, we have to listen to God and not man, or not people, I'll say people. That's, that's a great mandate for us. That's a great um, paraphrase for our faith. We have to listen to God, not people. And, and you think of some of the great martyrs of our faith. I mean, even in earlier time, I mean, recent times, uh, during uh, the Nazi concentration camps, Maxim Kolbe, uh, he puts himself out there to, to be killed rather than a, a father of children. Um, Edith Stein, a Jew who became a nun, a religious nun, and she also went to the concentration camps. Um, because they held on to what they believed, okay, they held on to their faith in Jesus Christ. And although the Jews were condemned by the Nazis as if they were not a real authentic people, they had to annihilate them, those who had faith really realized that the Jews are our sisters and brothers, and there's no reason for us to hate them. This was in the Nazi period. 
So we are obligated, according to the scriptures, to listen to God. And that gives us a great challenge because every day we have to make that discernment. How do I, and what I say and what I do, reflect my belief in God rather than people? And I want to say people, I want to say uh, popular opinion of people, uh, whether it's a political opinion, uh, a, a different kind of religious opinion, a social opinion, all of it. We have to look at what's God's will for me as I discern, as I look at the headlines of the papers, as I deal with the social settings of, of, in which I live. At home, how do I listen to the word of God in my life or do I listen to my own word, talk about people, when I'm dealing with my family members or my neighbors? So, so this, this phrase, we must obey God rather than people, uh, is a great little phrase that we could hold in our pockets and in our hearts every day. To follow Jesus above the challenges of life. Right now, the, the, the current fear Okay, in New York City and, and other cities throughout the, the country uh, as a result of the trial that's going on. And, you know, all of us have to stand up for what is right because God is good, God is right, God is truth. So we're being asked in, in our city and other cities that if we need to protest what goes on, whatever the results are, we don't know yet. We have to do it in a way that reflects who we are as people who follow God, who, people who follow Jesus. So our method of protest can be verbal, can be physical protesting, but it, but it can't be violent. And I'm not, I, I know you, you guys are not gonna be out there violently protesting, but, but our influence is, is important. And how we think and how we talk about our expression of our rights is important. Because we as Christians, as, as Catholics, we have the obligation to express our right, which means God above all in our lives. And, and it's an obligation to express our right, God above all in our lives in the social setting. So whether we deal with our family and friends, whether we deal with the political system, let your voice be heard, but reflecting Jesus. And, and the apostles got in trouble with that because they, they said, sorry, I mean, you told us not to preach in the name of Jesus, but we've got to. I mean, the Holy Spirit has inspired us, I'm going to paraphrase, to do what is right, to do God's will. So we have to do God's will. I mean, you're going to condemn us, you're going to forbid us to speak, but we still got to do God's will. Again, go back to some of the, 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 the Nazi... Uh, martyrdoms of, of the Jews or, or even the Christians during that period. They, they stood up for what they believed and they died. That, that's the key. They, they did. They suffered. They died. But you know what? We're all going to die. So better we should die doing God's will than doing people's will because people's will eventually will change. People die and they'll fade away. God's will will not. I mean, we are people who trust in the eternal one. That's very interesting. We trust in God being part of our lives and us being part of God's life. That's important. It's almost like we have a foot in each world, the heaven and, and the present world. And Jesus, when he's talking to Nicodemus, talks about that. You know, if, if God sends his son from above and his son brings his word and his son's word is available to anyone that hears it and the Holy Spirit inspires us to leave it and, and, and absorb it and put it as part of our lives. And therefore, he will bring us to heaven. Now, I, I can't live thinking I'm going to go to heaven or not. For me, that doesn't work. I mean, I hope we go to heaven, we all do. But I live here and now, and I think here and now is how we will reflect whether we are going to be absorbed by God or whether we're going to be absorbed by the earth only. So how we live, the quality of our lives, the quality of how we keep our faith is here and now. Yeah, okay, we have a destiny. We have a, a, a direction we're going in. And Jesus makes it very clear that he testified to what he has seen from above, 
So he came, he gave what he knew from above, the God's, God the Father's will, and he did it, and he died. But the key is, he rose from the dead. So as we follow him, we're not going to embrace death that has an end. If we follow Jesus, when we embrace death, we will enter into our new and everlasting life. Now that's, that comes to us here on earth as we live our own lives, but it also comes to us as we pray and put our prayers before God. And we're not just wishing uh, Gunther's dad is recovering. We're not just wishing as we pray for Debbie in, in New Jersey that she's going to get better. We're not wishing that. We're praying. Wishing is man's method. Prayer is our method, uniting our wills with God's will. And if, as we all say in the Lord's Prayer, your will be done. So whatever God's will is, is what we're praying for. And we pray that our will and God's will are one.